Long before midnight last night, rescue services feared the worst. Lifeboat Solomon Brown already out of radio contact three hours. And before that, Coast Guards had heard the Union Star failing to come to terms with a tug offering a tow. But all night they toiled, led by neighbouring lifeboat crews, lifelong friends of those aboard the Solomon Brown. We went in as close as we could in the dark. Uh, we wouldn't uh, go right in close to the shore. The sea was very heavy running, running in. Uh, in case there should have been any survivors just off the shore, we've searched, but uh, we haven't found anything. And you're going back out again? Going back at daylight, yes. And daylight found Coxman Mitchell moving through the settling sea, the start of a day in which 200 volunteers like him were to risk their lives in search of the impossible, a survivor. RAF helicopter crews shuttled ceaselessly along the coastline. Their crews peering through the spray in the hope that so many hours after the disaster, someone still might be alive down there. The Union Star had been cast like a plastic toy on the rocks, a superstructure squashed beneath and no sign of life. Launched ten days ago, she was on her maiden voyage bearing fertiliser from Holland to Runcorn. Her new propeller shining starkly out of the water, along her side the clues to the last hours. With the master, his wife and the girls off, the Solomon Brown's last desperate attempt to rescue the other four. The lifeboat's paint and torn lines underlined their contact and the theory that as the bigger ship rolled, she fell smashing the lifeboat into smithereens. Along the coast, bits of wreckage, whilst this was the largest piece of her to be recovered. And beyond, in the heaving seas, the body of yet another young crewman drifted. By now, the Sea King helicopters were braving all conditions just to rescue the dead, winching them back to the quayside of their village. Christmas in Mausol, now a time for unconsolable grief. Huddles of cousins, brothers, wives and sisters waited for nothing. For each of the eight dead lifeboatmen lived here, the coxswain was the landlord of the most important pub. Together, his crew leave 12 children under 10 without a father. Back at the Union Star, naval divers had been banging on the side of the ship in the hope of a response from an air pocket inside. As they prepared to blast a hole in the hull, it was still just possible that the men who had not been picked up could have survived. Braving a considerable sea, they leapt across the rocks to attach plastic explosives to two portholes that would gain them entry, either to find a survivor or to confirm another death. Two blasts were necessary, the ship's new metal refusing to yield easily. But their gamble was in vain, for very soon after, the ship's interior was ignited by a fragment of explosive and began to burn furiously. Exhausted, the divers sat above the wreck. Their unstinting effort to find someone still alive had failed. The tragedy had proved total. John Snow, ITN, Mausole.